Okay, so in this video, I want to cover how I created this sci-fi weapon in plasticity and moved it to, through Substance Painter and Blender and the steps involved. And just want to give an overview of the more technical process because the truth is you can go and find a lot of videos that cover a lot of the art form. And I'll talk a little bit about that. But uh, I find that's, I wouldn't say easy, but it's it's more subjective and there's a lot of options for it. Um, whereas I find kind of the hard part is the transferring from program to program and the technical details. And if you miss a step, things can go wrong. So I wanted to cover basically my workflow for how I created this. All right, so moving, let's start with plasticity. Um, I'm going to actually undo a few settings here. And uh, if I'm exporting a model from Plasticity, uh, you're, the default's not necessarily going to be super great. So I find that, uh, or I found for this project, the ingons work pretty good. I made a density of one. And this keeps things visually clean, even though we're working with ingons. Um, and let's see, we, uh, I turned off this setting because I found it created straighter lines and I figured that'd probably be better. There might be a few other things that I did, but that's really gonna be dependent on each project or each, uh, each model really. So those, these things may vary. You may not want this many polygons. You might in some cases want more, I, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure why, <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, possibilities there. And, um, I'll mention briefly, you know, there's a whole discussion I could have about whether we should use all quads versus ingons. I went with ingons not only because it was simpler, um, but because, you know, I don't know that it would really make sense for me to spend extra time. If I were selling this as a model online, then it might make sense. Otherwise, the truth is for a lot of games and honestly, probably even bigger productions, there's just not the time to go and do all that fancy, you know, configuration with, you know, all that fancy modeling with all quads. It's a nice thought. In some cases it might make sense. In this case, it just, it, it keeps the polygon count lower and, you know, it's just an easier, either easier process. So exporting that to Blender, of course, this has the texturing already, but I created a bunch of different materials. This is used in Substance Painter. And I just kind of had, I had to go maybe back and forth a little bit to try to figure out um, the grouping here for which, which objects should be part of which materials. And then of course I used that as a basis for the UV unwrapping. Of course there's, you know, potentially different ways you could do this, but uh, I think I did it if I remember correctly, because it's been a while. If uh, for, for the individually marked materials, I would use, you know, one UV map per material and, you know, one material for uh, each object. Now, of course, if you're working on an even more advanced project, then it may make sense to have either multiple materials or different ID maps. Uh, there's, you know, tutorials about that online that you can find, but I kept things fairly simple for this. The unwrapping for me was kind of the most painful and tedious. Uh, I found that Substance Painter doesn't really work well without good unwrapped maps, and that required more manual work rather than automatic. So what I found worked pretty good for this was to select the edges with the edge mode and select sharp edges, and then of course mark sharp with the control E, and then mark, you know, also split things up by manually marking certain edges as well as needed. Um, so there's a few edges that needed that. Occasionally I'd have to clean up some edges and, or, you know, basically the markings themselves. I think I had to do that down here. For example, I really uh, had a hard time with the, uh, this right here. And it, because I had some, some bevels built into the mesh, it just became a real pain to do this because we weren't using all quads. So there's one, one argument for all quads right there. Other than that though, the unwrapping was, it took a while, um, but the process was pretty straightforward. I think I had an issue with one of these pieces. I think it was this piece right here that 
just didn't behave right. So I had to do some things manually with it. But other than that, it was pretty good. Um, then, of course, for exporting, we exported with FBX. And I can't remember. I wish I could. It's been a while. Whether or not I tri triangulated the faces, did I use tangent space? Because I initially had issues with the normals, and um, that became a real pain in Substance Painter. However, that seemed to be all mostly fixed simply by fixing the UV. You know, I was trying to use automatic UV unwrapping, and that just didn't work. So that seemed to fix it. I don't know if I use some of these. Uh, you might have to experiment. All right, so. Then uh, I think importing, uh, I believe I used the Blender Start of Assets. I can't say that for sure, which of course I think would have defaulted to the OpenGL normal map format. That can be important. Um, and then of course select the file and imported it. And I got this. Well, I, said, <laughs> I didn't automatically get this. I had to work with the textures. Um, Substance Painter to me is a little bit strange with it the way it requires baking. I kind of get that, especially if you're working with like game assets or whatever. It makes sense to go ahead and, and bake those rather than have those generated all the time. Uh, and also, I guess the, the other thing with that is then you can go from program to program. I I sort of wish that things that there was a different workflow. Who you know, who knows? Maybe a program will come out or has come out that has more of that. But other than that, once I actually got the good uh, UV unwraps, um, which probably made sense to have anyway for the texture quality itself, um, I was able to bake the mesh maps. And of course, there's different, um, I wanna mention here, these are all the different materials that we made so that we could sp split up the materials in the different sections. With the mesh maps, just briefly, I think I did 4K for pretty much everything. Um, I forget if that applies to the mesh map itself or if that's just the texture. Cause I think that the, the texture size is definitely 4K. The, uh, the, the uh, mesh maps, I don't remember. I wanna say one of the, the settings. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's 2K I would assume from this, assuming it hasn't changed. Um, and so that I found, I think worked pretty good. It could stand maybe be a little bit better, but I think it was working for what I needed and also set up the secondary rays for some of these to be higher quality. I may have adjusted some of the um, other options here. I, I honestly don't remember, but overall that was some of the most important things, getting those good solid UV unwraps and also getting the baking right. So once that was done, um, worked with some of the default materials and edited them. Um, not gonna go into all of the details. I have some decals that um, I think were some normal maps just applied. I think uh, I think those are built in. And I, I honestly forget what the procedure is for editing those, but had some normal maps added for the bolts. And then of course have a base metal here, a base metal material for um, for the different parts. And of course, di use different metal materials for different parts to make it look more interesting. Um, I tried to keep triplanar projection for everything. That's essentially the equivalent to box mapping in Blender. Um, I find that works pretty well. There's a few spots that still had some seams, but it's like, Okay, you know, for, for my purposes, for what I'm planning on doing, I don't know that it'll make a difference. Same with, you know, I could do more than 4K, but, you know, most of this looked pretty good. Um, some of the textures on the main body are a little bit low res if you zoom in, but you zoom out and, you know, it's gonna look good at distance. And at the end of the day, that's probably gonna be one of the most important things. Um, again, I forget if, I, I may have also, just as, as I'm remembering it, I may also have done some normal map flipping just to fix some issues inside of Blender before I exported. Um, then, you know, uh, a lot of this, I use some default materials. So I think I adjusted the edgeware settings on some of these, um, you know, probably 
you know, made some adjustments just to whatever looked good. I think I made a custom or more custom material for this handguard, combining two materials and then using a edgeware as a mask to really, it's the same material, one of them's brighter, and then um, I used a edgeware mask to blend the two together. And a lot of it was just that. Um, nothing super complicated in a lot of ways. Once you get started, it's more of just the TDM of all the, you know, kind of the same settings again. I, I'm a real fan of Triplanner because it means I don't necessarily have to think as hard of erasing seams manually or doing this, you know, just fiddling with some of the other options. I, I do wish, you know, I'll have to look into seeing if there are some defaults for that. But uh, overall, that seemed to work pretty good. So coming back here into Blender, let's take a look at the shading. Do, do, do. Okay, and... Most of this, you know, I, I think I had to import this manually or possibly, uh, I think Node Wrangler has some options for in, in, like importing a set of textures. I think I did have to import, like select that set manually. So, you know, I think I had to select, you know, in this case, green from, you know, all this. And then Node Wrangler has some options. I couldn't tell you what the... Um, what the hotkey for that is because I don't remember, but you should be able to find um, some things for that online. Um, and with that, I also used bevel shaders on pretty much everything because I figured that would give a nice rounded edge to, let's get this rendered. Basically give a nice rounded edge even though we're not using true rounded edges and it really makes sense for something like this especially because I can see this being replicated a lot of times, duplicated a lot of times so it may make sense to have less geometry and at the end of the day it, it still you know looks pretty good. The most complicated material because a lot of these I think I might have just the only thing I did was maybe delete some of the textures I wasn't using. Um, I did some fancy stuff with this crystal type thing um, back here. I think I used the roughness for, you know, I adjusted some of the ranges to control the exact amount of roughness and, you know, used the roughness to control the index of refraction, which created some cool effects. Um, you know, used, uh, did, did some here. Well, actually, I guess that's not connected. Heh, <laughs> never mind. Um, I think I've adjusted the green color or maybe just the brightness of the green using this. Um, oh, you know, other than that, not really super complicated. So that creates this as a complete setup. Um, I found it looks pretty good. Not 100% not perfect. You know, still a lot more that could be done if we're trying to really polish this out. But for my purposes, I, I you know, think this will work pretty well it looks cool and at the end of the day that's one of the and <laughs> in, in this case that was a, in a lot of ways the most important requirement so um i think that's it i think i got everything um if i you know miss something or you'd like some clarification please leave me a comment and if you like this video please consider subscribing clicking the like button on this video, clicking the notification bell to stay up to date for new videos. And as always, um, take care guys. Thanks for watching.